I need a cool opener catchphrase like, hey Vsauce, Michael here. What's up guys? Next week, I'm actually gonna be off because I'm gonna be in Hawaii. But I wanted to unlock the ability for you guys to go into DeFi applications and build your own programmatic DeFi quantitative FinTech hedge fund monstrosities. So that's what this video is going to be going over. We're gonna go over using Aave in a programmatic Pythonic way. And we can use this to put down collateral, you know, take out borrows and, and do uh, a lot of really, really powerful financial instruments. One of the big ones being short selling. Of course, if we wanna short sell an asset, we can absolutely use Aave to do so, which is very exciting. We can also borrow a huge position to do flash loans, which you know I have another video as well, but we can leverage our positions and leverage whatever we're doing and, and leverage our exposure to an asset, which is really exciting. So we're going to put down some collateral, borrow an asset, and then repay it all in a single script, right? You can absolutely do all this stuff through the Aave UI. However, this will allow us to do it all programmatically and we can time it, we can build our, our, our DeFi quantitative hedge funds with this or whatever we wanna do. So let's get coding. So we're actually gonna be mainly working with this repository, this Aave Brownie Pi repository here. And we can go ahead and just git clone it, uh, scroll down everything that you need to know, everything that we're gonna do is in here. In fact, I've written a wonderful blog on this on the Chainlink blog here, and it goes over literally everything in this video, um, and it goes over it in a fantastic way. So let's jump into it. So I've already gone ahead and git cloned the repository here, and I have my private key exported, and I have my and I have you know everything already compiled, everything installed. But just in case you don't, you want to do just a pip install requirements.txt. Uh, this is going to install Brownie. If we go to requirements.txt, it gives us brownie and .env, or you can use pipx. I've actually been using pipx more and more. So you do um, pipx, uh, excuse me, pipx install f brownie. You just, you know, you just follow what's right here, you know, uh, pip install user pipx, pipx ensure path. But I've already installed brownie, right? I can do brownie and I'll get the output. Whoa! So sorry, oh, I am using this brand new uh, wallet here, which I haven't even backed up because it's just for fake stuff with two ETH and 200 link. Uh, and then I'll also get some die pretty soon. So um, but yeah, so I have my inferior project ID, my private key exported. If you if you're like, what what are you even talking about? You know, go watch some of my other videos on getting set up with brownie, and they will let you know. So let's go ahead and do a quick start here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do this brownie, brownie run scripts, get with.py network. Coven. And what this is going to do, it's going to take some of the ETH that we have in our transaction and turn it into wrapped ETH, right? So if we look in our Brownie config, we can see the WETH token on Coven, because that's what I'm using, is, where's the WETH token? Is this address right here. And now if I go to my MetaMask, you can see that some of my ETH has dropped, and we're going to go ahead and add token. And I can't add token because I do need to back this up, son of a Yay, now we can now I can do stuff. Anyways, we're gonna add this weth token in here. Go to our MetaMask, add token, custom token, next, and boom, we have one weth. So this this first script that we did, this get weth script, let's go ahead and go to it. So we got this get get weth script. And this is all the code that we really had here. So we're getting our account. I'm doing some kind of fancy stuff, but you know, um, if we go to our config. We have from key and it's just grabbing our private key environment variable. Uh, and then we're taking the WETH interface, which is just an ERC20 interface, but we have all these interfaces in here. These interfaces are used to get the ABIs of these smart contracts. And then we're just, uh, we're getting this WETH contract and then we're calling the deposit uh, function on this WETH. And even if I didn't want to do this script, to, to get this WETH token, I could even just take this address and go to Coven Etherscan, pop it in here. And I can even just go to the contract, you know, write contract. And I could call this this deposit function. Now, what this WETH does is it takes, um, it takes our Ether and turns it into wrapped Ether. So it turns into an ERC20 version of Ether, why is that good? Well, it makes it easy to work with protocols that only work with ERC-20s. So that's why it's uh, it's really good. So now we have some Ether. 
or excuse me, now we have some wrapped ether. Now we can go ahead and do all this crazy stuff that I have in this Ave borrow thing. So let's actually just go ahead and just run this script and then we'll talk about what, what the hell just happened. So we're gonna do brownie, run scripts, Ave borrow to pi, network coven. Now this will also work on mainnet fork and uh, it'll go a lot faster. Uh, we're gonna do it on Coven so we can see Etherscan and see what actually is happening here. Uh, but there are mainnet fork details in here if you wanna do it as well. Uh, to do it with mainnet fork, uh, again, you just need to make sure you have your, um, your uh, the Ganache CLI uh, installed. So let's go ahead and run this. And we're gonna see it go a little bit slowly. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to be approving our ERC20. So we're approving that um, the Aave contract can work with our, our wrapped ether that we just created. Great, so transaction went through. We could look at this on the Coven ether scan. Awesome, I'm gonna kinda, I'm gonna try to read down as it, as it goes. Next, we deposit some collateral, right? So we have this, this deposit script. So if we look at our, our main function here, we have this approve, uh, and then we have this deposit function that we call. So we have this lending pool address. This is the address of Ave, which we need to uh, deposit collateral in, right? The only way we can borrow stuff back is if we deposit first, right? And I, I, I got this address by calling this, this get lending pool function. Um, it'll, it'll give you the address. Uh, all the Ave docs developer, all the functions that I'm calling on these contracts are in this, are, are in this Ave. Uh, documentation here. So I'm calling this deposit function right here. I'm depositing my weth. I'm depositing one weth uh, on behalf of myself and a referral code, right? So I deposit in here. And now it gives us a little bit of it spits out. Um, it spits out a little information. We have this. Uh, we have this get borrowable data function that spits out some information. So we have 0. 0, 1, something, 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 something worth of eth deposited. And I have zero eth uh, borrowed. So based off of uh, liquidation thresholds and stuff, we're going to borrow 0 0.08 worth of eth in die, right? So we're, so what is, we first need to find the conversion rate of eth to die. So we call this get asset price function right here. And it allows us to borrow 200 die, so about $200. So 0 0.08 of F apparently at the current conversion rate is about 200 die or $200. So great. So now that we have collateral put down, we borrow the die and we send another transaction to do so. Let's even look at this transaction that we sent to borrow the die, right? So let's look at Coven Etherscan. Great. So here's what happened. So so there's kind of a lot of stuff going on here, but we were given 200 die, and we were given 200 of a stable debt bearing die, right? So we are given, this is a representation of the debt we actually owe to the Avi protocol. And the only reason again, that we could take this out is because we have Weth put down as collateral. And uh, the protocol also gave out some Ave interest bearing die. This is, you know, this isn't us, this is to other people. Minted it out of thin air because we, you know, because protocols gotta get paid. So once we borrowed it, great. We just borrowed this much. Uh, we have one wrapped uh, weth worth of ETH deposited, and you know the exchange ratio isn't exactly one to one. So this is what it is here, uh, and we have this much ETH borrowed, uh, and we can only borrow a little bit le left, right? So we didn't borrow the maximum amount that we could borrow because we want it to be a little bit safe. If we borrow too much, and all of a sudden the, the price of Ethereum tanks will get liquidated and we don't want that. So we wanted to do one more thing. We wanted to call this uh, repay function, repay all. So again, we got to approve. Uh, we have to approve the Ave can actually work with our die and then we just pay it back. So we just call this repay function here. Let's look at that transaction in, right? If we look in here, we can see, um, some some crazy stuff happens with the Ave interest bearing die. Don't worry about that. But uh, we ended up uh, getting rid of our stable debt, right? You see, it gets burnt. It gets sent to the zero address here, and then we paid back the die, right? So we, we paid the uh, we paid the die back. So um, to this 
to the um, initialized immutable admin upgradable proxy, which again, you know, is is the proxy for the uh, Ave uh, code. So, boom, that's really it. Um, all the code is here uh, to do for you to learn how to do this. Now, what is interesting with all this stuff is, you know, if if we look at our main function here real quick. Oh yeah, and then uh, again, you know, you can run this, you know. Uh, oh, somebody somebody yelled at me for typing clear a whole bunch. Here, I'll do command K, boom. Um, Brownie runs scripts. I can even do Ave borrow to pi. I'll just leave it blank, so the network will be a mainnet fork, and it'll just, you know, it'll kick off a Ganache CLI, and everything will run much faster, right? Because it's it's working with a Ganache CLI. So uh, you can also do that to test your stuff, which is great. But one thing that we could do is after we borrow, uh, excuse me, after we deposit some stuff. And then where do we call the borrow a thing? Oh, uh, borrow ERC20. Right after here, what we could do is we could do like, oops, that's JavaScript. We could do like sell ERC20, take profits from sold ERC20 to put down as collateral uh, and then borrow more. So uh, this is something that's really risky because we're leveraging up really hard. If the price of whatever token we're putting down as uh, collateral tanks, then our entire portfolio tanks as well. Um, but it's a way to like, if we want to like short sell like you, the, the dollar, or we want to like leverage up with like a certain uh, asset that we like, this is a great way to do it. Um, you can also, obviously you can deploy smart contracts, you know, with this uh, interface here, right? We don't have any here, but if you want to deploy some smart contracts that did any of this stuff, great. If you want to put this on a cron script, great. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic way to kind of start automating and building your, uh, I'm calling it like the DeFi quant, the rise of the DeFi quant, the uh, the engineers who, um, the engineers and researchers who are going to, you know, do crazy stuff. And uh, what would also be cool is if you combine this with something like SushiSwap or like Uniswap, and so you're borrowing and trading and lending and doing all this crazy stuff in the same interface, well, um, with that being said, you know, all the tools to become a DeFi quant are right here, guys. Uh, everything's here. Um, leave a comment if you want to see more or if you want to see something, something really cool with this. Uh, this is a bit of a shorter video, but uh, hope you guys learned something. Thanks. Bye.